Israel, I mean the Israelites, when they were moving out from Egypt to Canaan, before I begin, do we have a visitor this morning? An Adventist. Thank you. Now, when they were moving from Egypt to Canaan, there were some things that they had to prepare themselves before they entered where? where? Canaan. There were some agreements that they were to make with their God before they entered where? Canaan. And of course their mediator was Moses. And by the way, when you read the Bible, uh, uh, the book of Exodus chapter 4, you are aware, that is not the message of today. It is just a uh, by the way, Moses chapter 4. In fact, if Moses chapter 3, chapter 4, Moses is contending with who? With God. He was being asked, I have chosen you to go and take my people out of uh, Egypt because the 400 years are over. So Moses is contending with God. Now, when you read chapter 4 from verse 11 onwards, Moses is saying, now, okay, fine, I will go. But when I go there, what should I say? My mouth is not that okay. And you see, by the way, most of us, we say that Moses was uh, stammering. He was not a stammerer from birth. The reason why he said, I, will, I am not well with my tongue, it is because, of course, he had been raised in Egypt, okay, now, there was a time he had to leave all in Egypt to go for preparation of the work that God had to give him, okay, of bringing out the, Egypt, I mean, the Israelites from Egypt. So when he went to Midian, he learned the tongue of the Midian. So upon coming back now to Egypt, he could not speak well the language of the Egyptian. That is why he said, I cannot speak, I'm not okay with my tongue. Are we together? And God said, I have given you a solution. And the solution is your brother, Aaron. I have made thee a God to Aaron. And Aaron will be your mouthpiece. There is no time Moses spoke to the Egyptians. To the king. I mean, to the king. The message was given unto him, yes. That is why when you read Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18 and 19, he says that I will raise out of these people a prophet like you and he will receive my words and he will speak only that which comes from me that is why we say a prophet does not speak of his own and in fact when you study that message even Christ when he was on earth he spoke not of his own are we together but only that which he had from his father anyway that is that was a diversion now as they were moving, Moses received a message from God. And he would come to the Israelites. And everything that they were being told, they said, we will do what? 19 verse 7 and 8, Exodus. That is where we begin. Our hearts, that is the message of this morning. 19 verse, 19 verse 7. 7 and 8. Says, what does the Bible say? And Moses came. And Moses came. And called for the elders of the people. And called for the elders of the people. And laid before their faces all the words which the Lord commanded. And laid before the people all the words the Lord had commanded them. And all the people answered. To and him. all the people answered him, saying, All that all the Lord, the Lord has spoken, has we will do. Spoken, we will we do. Will do. When I was a few. You see, sometimes, and you see, that is the heart of a Christian. When we become Christian, when we are baptized, there is a certain zeal in our hearts that we will serve the Lord. We will offer ourselves for the service. We are rendering ourselves, we are committed to serve the Lord. That is the heart of a Christian. But it reaches a point where we begin to backslide, slowly by slowly. 
when we are baptized, we take vows. Is it true? That we are not going to take this and this. That we are not going to defile our bodies. That our bodies is the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit and therefore we are not going to do this and this. We are not going to involve ourselves in this line of life because it is not fit for us because we have offered ourselves for the service of God. But it reaches a point we begin to backslide slowly by slowly. What is the problem? Our heart. Israelites said all that the Lord has said we shall do. In fact, they said we shall hear and we shall do. Uh, 24 verse 3 and uh, 7, the same book. Exodus 24 verse 3 and 7. Verse, you are there just read. Verse 3 says, it says, And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord. And Moses again had a message from God and came to the people and told the people all the words of the Lord. And all the judgments. And all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice. And all the people answered with one voice. And said. And said. All the words, all the the words said, that the Lord has said. Will do. We will do. Verse 7. And he took the book of the covenant. And he told them the book of the covenant. And read in the audience of the people. And he read the words before the people. And they said. And they said. All that the, all Lord, that had said, the Lord had said. We will do and we be will obedient. Do and, be obedient. and be obedient. What is wrong with the heart of a man? What is it that at first we have a zeal to serve the Lord. But it reaches a point where. We begin to, to, to go back to our ways. That is the heart of a Christian. And you see, everybody else here has an experience of that. Because unless we experience that, our Christianity again will not be that okay. You see, everything else cannot be okay all the time. It will only be when we are out of this earth. When we are saved. Remember, we are not yet saved now, isn't it? Yes. yes. But when we, when we get to the point of glorification, when sin is destroyed, then of course we shall be in line with what the Lord needs. But again, even as we are still living on this earth, there are things that we need to do on our part in order to fulfill what the Lord needs us to do. So he says in the book, again, go to chapter 5 of Deuteronomy now. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 27 and 28. Verse 27. That is another witness. It says chapter that, 5, verse 27 and 28. What go thou near, say? go thou near, and go hear. Go yourself near the Lord. And hear all the Lord. All that the Lord your God shall say. And hear all that the Lord your God will say. And speak thou unto us all that the Lord And again after God. you hear, come back and speak unto us that which the Lord has said. And we will hear it and do it. And we will hear it. And do it. And do it. And the Lord heard the voice of your words. When and he the Lord heard the voice of your words when you spoke unto me. When you spoke unto me, and the Lord said unto me, and the Lord said unto me, I have heard the voice. I of have words heard the Israelites. I have heard the Adventists. I have heard the group, Adventist group in Dead and Kimathi, that the, whatever I have said, they will hear and do. But finish the verse. Continues to say, hey. I have heard the voice of the words of these people, which they have spoken unto thee. They have well said all that they have spoken. It is good that they have spoken. Maliza, verse 29. Oh, that there was such a heart in them. Oh, how I wish that they have such a heart in them. That they will fear me. That they will fear me. And keep all my commandments. And always, keep all my commandments. That it might be well with them. And that with it their might children be well forever. with them and their children. Now, when God says, I have heard what this group have said, all oh, that they might have a heart 
to accomplish what they said that they will hear the words of God and do them. What do you think? Do you think there is that heart in these people? If God himself that, oh, how I wish that they have such a heart. It means there is not such a heart of doing God's word. Then what is the problem? Why is it we make promises to God? Why is it sometimes we are under fire to do the I mean to do the work of God through that zeal which we receive? But it reaches a point we start to, to water down our feeling. What is it? Who do you think is the problem? Now, this is the problem. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. It is a common verse. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. What does the Bible say? It says, it says, The heart is deceitful above all things. The heart is deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked. <laughs> and desperately evil. Who can know it? Who can know it? The heart is desperately evil and deceitful. You see, and you see, that is the reason why even Peter himself before Christ, he said that if all people, if all the disciples will run away from you, yet will I not, I will follow you. That was self-righteousness. And he was deceiving himself, not knowing that I have to leave all to Christ so that he can give me the strength I require at the hour of testing, at the hour of temptation. Christ said, it's okay, you can do it. Well, but I want to warn you earlier before it happens that you will do what? Deny me how many times? Three times. Sometimes we will say we will do. I, I just need to work for God. That is nice. But God again looks at us and he says, how I wish these people have a heart. And by the way, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse, uh, verse 11 and 12. Verse 11 says, Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God in not keeping his commandments. In his not statements. keeping his commandments when you do what? Continue. And, and his statutes which and, I command you. And his statutes that I command you today. Verse 12. Verse 12. Lest when thou hast eaten and at full uh -huh. and hast built goodly houses uh -huh. and dwelt therein yes. and when and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, hey. and all that thou hast is multiplied, mm -hmm. then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt. So God told, called the Israelites as they were journeying on, that be careful, when the Lord your God increases you in material, and when you inherit the land of I promise that you forget the Lord. Wakati makundi yako ya kondoa ya atakapo ongezeka, na makundi ya ngombe wako atakapo ongezeka, na mbakapo jenga nyumba na kuishi katika hizo nyumba, mka msahau mungu. Mwie sema kwa mba, manino yote mungu waliyo ya zungumza, tutayatenda. You be careful. And by the way, what happened when they settled in a, in a uh, kana? They began to do what? <coughs> to worship the gods of the communities surrounding them. When you read from the book of 2 Kings chapter 17, from verse 30. In fact, the, the whole chapter is very nice for that purpose. But, but I want us to read from verse 13, sorry, verse 30 to verse 33, and then you skip to verse 41. And here, what these people did. And again we ask ourselves, could it be the same thing that we do also on our part? Could there be other gods that we worship even as we worship God the Father? Because you see, they had mixed feelings and therefore they worshipped other gods and burned. Read verse 30. 
And the men of Babylon kept, made, made the sack, sack of Benoth, uh-huh. and the men of Kut made Negal, and the men of Hamath made Ashima. Yes. And the Avites made Nibhaz, and Tak Tak, and Sevaphites. Mm-hmm. Those but, are gods but, in, in diverse places in the land of Babi, uh, 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 Babylon. Continue. Burnt their children in fire. They offered offering of children and burning their children. There was that sacrifice. Uh huh. To Adramelech and Anamelech, the gods of Seba. Verse thirty-two. So they feared the Lord. Now, Israelites feared the Lord. If you look at the word Lord there, it is not a, a, a god, the small gods. Okay. Yes. This is God Himself. So they feared the Lord. And made unto themselves of the lowest of them priests of the high places. Of the high, which high places do you think there is being referred to there? To serve the other gods with the small g now. So they made other priests of the high places to serve gods. Continue reading. Which sacrificed for them in the houses of the high places. Which sacrifices for them in the houses of the high places. Places. places continue reading they feared the lord verse 33 says they feared the lord and served their own gods and served their own gods after the manner of the nations after the manner of the nations whom they carried away from whom them. they carried away from them from them the question is could it be also on our part that we serve the lord yes but there are other small gods that we serve also. Could it be that there are certain characters that we cherish that definitely we know that when Christ comes today, we are not going to make it to heaven. The Israelites, we are told they served God, yes, but also they served their other gods. Verse 41. Verse 41 says, Yes. So these nations feared the Lord. So these nations, including Israelites, feared the Lord and served their graven images. And served their graven images. That is the question. Today we might not be having statues in our houses. We might not be having images in our houses. But could it be that we are also serving certain gods that when I look at you, of course I see Christianity because we gather here on every Sabbath. Every morning we have prayers. But it, could it be that we have other gods we are serving? <coughs> Apart from the true God, we are not deceiving God. We are not deceiving God. You may deceive Samuel, but you cannot deceive God. Remember Samuel was told to go and anoint the house of who? Jesse. By getting a king, the next king after King Saul. And when he went there, remember, Samuel was a prophet. And what is the work of a prophet? To foretell things to happen from God, isn't it? When he went there, the first son passed by. And he said, this should be there. This should be the one. Because he looked at his out, uh, 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 morphological outlook. This man was mtu wa miraba minne. Bila shaka na Mungu wakati huo alikuwa anachagua watu wenye ni uweko na nguvu. Vijana wenye wako na nguvu. Alipokuwa akichagua Sauli. Sauli of course alikuwa mtu wa chini kabisa lakini alikuwa mtu amekula vizuri. So alipoenda kwa Samuel, amini kwa Jesse, akapita kijana wa kwanza na akasema bila shaka huyu ndi huyu ndiye. Lakini Mungu akamwambia don't look at the out. Don't look at the outside of this person. No. I don't look at that. I look at the heart. God can read the heart. We can deceive anybody else, but we cannot deceive God. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Says, it says, Keep thy heart with all diligence. Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it, for are, out the, of it are the issues of are life. The issues of life. 
we are admonished that we keep our heart with all diligence. And by the way, when he talks of a heart, is it this uh, gadget on your chest? He is talking of the mind. Guard the loins of your mind. Pastor Peter says that. Guard the loins of your mind. Because from the loins of your mind comes all the issues of life. Proverbs also says, my son, give me your heart. He says, give me your heart. And when we surrender our heart to God, he says, I will take care of the rest. And that is conversion. Maybe if we get time tomorrow, we shall be looking at the man in Romans chapter 7. And this man is just the same as Israelites. Every time God speaks to them, every time they receive a certain message, with a zeal, they say, we will do what? We will do. But it reaches a time they begin to go back. They begin to loosen the nuts. They begin to cherish their former lifestyle. They begin not appreciating the word that once was precious to them. They go back to the ways, their former ways. But what is the problem? The Bible tells us the problem is the heart. The heart is deceitful above all things who can know it. Not even yourself can know your heart. That is why sometimes we have that zeal, but it reaches a point we begin to go back. You cannot know your heart, you yourself. And therefore, who has the solution of our problem of our heart? Only God. It is only God. And this requires a total surrender. This requires us to give all. This requires us to take the counsel of the Bible as it is. Sometimes we say it is impossible for us to live without sin. It is possible. It is possible. Paul says in the book of uh, Galatians, chapter 2, verse 20, he says that I am crucified with Christ, and yet I do what? Are you there? Yes. Can you read the verse? It says, I am, I am crucified with, with Christ. Christ. Nevertheless, I Nevertheless am. do I live. Yet not I. Yet not I who lives now. But Christ, but Christ liveth, in, liveth me. in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself. When I was a few. And that is the total surrender we require, ladies and gentlemen. Without giving our all to Christ, we cannot make it. We cannot make it. We will do things on our own strength, thinking that we are in the right track. But God is far away from us. We need to allow Christ to work in us. And God is only looking at the willingness of our hearts. Are you willing? God is only requiring our willingness. Of course, we cannot do anything on our part to get salvation. That one is totally based on the merit of who? Christ. But the part that he's looking for is the willingness of your heart. Are you willing? Are you willing? Remember, the whole world has been called for salvation. But the, still the Bible says, many are called and yet few are chosen. chosen. Do you want to be among the group that is chosen? The problem of the heart. But God has the solution, and we have seen that. Let us surrender all to God. Let us give our heart to Christ. Let us live a life that we know it will please Christ. 
let us embrace and let us have it in mind that when we are out there, we have a cloud of witnesses that are looking at us. And therefore, I want us to read a quote here from the book of, I think, Second Select, uh, I mean, Select Messages, Book 2. Selected Messages, Book 2. There is a topic. Selected Messages, Book 2. It is found, of course, uh, in other in other books, but uh, selected messages book two page three hundred eighty six paragraph one. <coughs> selected messages book two page three hundred and eighty six paragraph one. Anybody with or I can just read. And uh, the spirit says. God's commandment keeping people are described by the prophet as men wonder at. We are to be a people distinct from the world. The eyes of the world are upon us. Okay? The eyes of the world are upon us and we are observed by many of whom we have no knowledge. That is why yesterday I told you when you pray, pray even for the forgiveness of influences that you cast out there. Because in your absence of your knowledge, people are influenced by your behavior and you are turning, changing many out there because of your lifestyle. Other people will just observe you, what you do, and they will just do what you do, not knowing that you have influenced them. And therefore, think about it. When I live a Christian life there, Christian lifestyle out there, and people look at me, do you think that many people in heaven will just come to you and say, you saved me because of the life you lived? Many people will get to heaven because of your influences. My brothers and sisters, your influence will be judged. Are we together? That is why Christianity, in Christianity we need to be careful. The spirit of prophecy here says that many people out of our knowledge are observing us and we influence them in our, one way or the other. So it continues, there are those who know something of the doctrines we claim to believe. Are we together? There is a story that people were invited in a wedding. Seventh-day Adventists were invited in, a, in another denomination wedding. And people out there know that Adventists don't take meat. Okay? And therefore, in the wedding, they were prepared vegetarian, vegetarian meal. Beans, greens, they were prepared for them. But again, when it reaches the time of serving, Adventists were never seen in the queue going serving. But the part of... Uh, I mean, the, 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 the flesh meal was finishing at a very higher rate, and yet these people were not seen. So, these guys were wondering what could be happening. Kumbe, wametuma watu waende wa wasavie, mana wa wakaonekana kwa line, of course, wata kule yo biz. Lakini wakua hapa kwa harusi, wataende wata sabu nini? Hiyo nyama, yinyi mbibu wa ngombe. Sasa ngombe ndiyo inaisha, kumbe hawa jamaa, Wametuma, watu na mwana kwa laini, amengia kwa laini, amenda kusabu nyama, diyo nyama zinaisha, na kule bills bado ziko zimejaa sotu ya mzii. Na wadiventisa hawanekani kwa laini. Kwa ni wanakula nini? Diyo mmoja hiko zunguka sasa, wakawana, ah, kumbe waja, na hawasabu, na wanakula pilao, enyamu. Kwa ni kumendaje? People out there know our principles. The spirit of prophecy says, 
There are those who know something about our, our doctrines. Okay? We claim to believe, and they are noting the effect of our faith upon our characters. They are waiting to see what kind of influence we exert and how we carry ourselves before the faithless world. The angels of heaven are looking upon us. We are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. That is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 9. Uh, so let us be careful, brethren. Let us watch our steps. That is why I told you from the beginning that don't think you came in Dead and Kimathi just to get your academic paper. That academic paper after your retirement age will be useless. It will be useless. You are not going with it in the grave. If at all we, there is still time for us maybe to live in this world, you will not go with it in the grave. Once I was a teacher, a high school teacher, and, and when I was a UT, and trained teacher, and I was asking my students, what do you want to become when you finish your, 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 your course? Maybe you are form four, what do you want to get, and which university do you want to go? So there was this one boy, said, when I finish, I want to go to the best university ever in, my, in this world, of course, Oxford or... Harvard, okay, or oh, Kimati, Dead and Kimati, <laughs> okay, and then I asked it to them, what do you want to go and study in Dead and Kimati or Harvard or the other university? <laughs> and they said, uh, a neurosurgeon, I want to be a neurosurgeon, okay, fine, after getting your neurosurgeon certificate, of course it is not in Kenya, <laughs> come back to Kenya. <laughs> Uh, hospitals will be looking for the, the job will be looking for them okay not them looking for the job okay okay fine after you get that nice job of course they will be earning a lot of money okay fine after you get and you earn a lot of money of course they will build my parents houses I will uh, be supporting our children and the children's homes I will be involved in a charity work okay okay fine that one is very very nice Okay, after that, of course, I'll be working. Okay, fine, you will be working, of course. I get a very beautiful wife, I marry. Okay, fine, you have a family, you have children. Now, what else? And this now began to think critically now. So he said, of course, after working, I will go retirement. Okay, fine, after going for retirement, I'll go back home and start playing with my grandchildren. Okay, fine, <laughs> you reach that point. Now, what else? They will be waiting for death. <laughs> okay, fine. After de death, so Atakwama, there is life after death. Education is not everything. When you make a tomb, Mombasa, when I end on a Girusha for Bahrain, Hapo, when you make a Mombasa, when you're a bridge, nearly bridge. Kwa sababu mtu amekosana na kijana wake. Kwa sababu mtu amekosana na na na, na msichana wake. Na by the way wenye wanaenda kujitoa uhai wengi ni wanaume. I really don't know what the problem with men is. So they go throw themselves in the water and this person do not know how to, to swim because it's a kissy or a no. <laughs> <laughs> At least no was know how to swim they have a leg. But this one is a nandi or a kissy. Or oh, somebody from Central Kenya. <laughs> so I went to Ruka, Kobahari, and I to swim. I didn't have a bar in the middle. I came to my mom to swimming pool. In a move, in a roll. When I was up in here, I had to catch up. I was too cool. So it rolls like this. Okay. So yeah, but in here, my mom was just too high. There is life after death. Na hata ukipanga kufanya hayo maneno bado utasimama katika kiti cha hukumu. Of course hukumu yako itakuwa imekatwa utakuwa umeua. We, sikiliza. I know such cases exist. 
But take your time. Think about the heavenly life also. Are we together? Mm -hmm. Let not your heart deceive you. Take your time, guys. And with that, I want us to sing song number 109, English. Then we finish. I believe I am within time. Okay? I don't want to extend, but I believe the message is wrong. May God bless us and may we take it positively that what we say, we do it because it is God who is doing what? Leading us. May God bless us. Amen. Christ has kindly, 109.